It's episode 102 of Off Script with Trish Gloss, and joining me via Skype today, I have the lovely and talented April Warnicky in the house. Look at this. Hey. <laughs> I don't know why I didn't think to talk to you sooner for this podcast because you are not only are you a KTVL alum, but you're still uh -huh. considered a celebrity in Southern Oregon. I get asked all the time, "How's April what? Warnicky?" What? Really? Truth. <laughs> it is truth. How well, can I come back then? Yes. We'll take you with open arms. I think, honestly, okay. the Rona has changed so much mm -hmm. of what we do on a day-to-day -day basis. So doing mm -hmm. podcasts via Skype is yeah. normal. It's normal. Yeah, it's normal. It's how everybody talks to each other now. Yeah, so. exactly. Yeah. Um, you are an Emmy award-winning meteorologist <laughs> in Arizona. You, I just asked you, you've been working for Good Morning Arizona for 15 mm -hmm. years now. 15 years next month. I don't, I don't know where that time went. I feel like I was there working with you in Medford yesterday, but apparently <laughs> it was 15 years ago. <laughs> no. Um, and so for those who don't know, April Warnicky, I know April because uh, she was doing mornings at KTVL way back in the day when I started at KTVL. And you were, you were brand new really at KTVL too, kind of, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I started there in uh, 2000. Right, so, right. Yeah. I came on board yeah. in 2002, and I will never forget, yeah. I walked in the front lobby. I don't remember who came to get me. It was either Gordon or the news director at the time. And you are mm -hmm. walking by, I think you're wearing a purple suit and slippers. <laughs> Sounds about right. <laughs> and, uh, and you stopped. You did like you were walking, and you stopped, and you said, are you Trish? And I was like, yeah. And you said, welcome. And that one yeah. word put me at such ease. And now, Aww. so much so, that's what I say to all of our new hires here. My first words are, Aww. hey, welcome. That's awesome. So, well, that's awesome. Uh, tell everybody where you're from originally. Um, I'm from Gilbert, Arizona, which is a suburb of Phoenix. So I grew up here. I went to um, Gilbert High School and then the University of Arizona in Tucson. And it was a journalism major and decided I guess around my senior year to go into broadcast journalism and sent all my tapes out and ended up in Medford. And that was, I think, the best thing that ever happened to me. Best thing. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. Did you grow up with siblings? I do. I have two brothers and they both live in Phoenix now, too. Oh, awesome. And they're, are they mm -hmm. older than you, right? Or no, wait, you're in the middle. No, they're younger. Yeah, they're oh. younger. Yeah, you're... I'm the bossy big sis. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, what did your parents do growing up? Uh, my dad was a fire chief here in Phoenix, mm -hmm. and so he is retired now, uh, but both my brothers are now in the Phoenix Fire Department. Wow, following in dad's footsteps. Mm -hmm. What's that like right now mm -hmm. for them? Are they enjoying it? Um, it's a little crazy. It's a little stressful. I mean, a lot of the protective gear. I was talking to one of them who was over here yesterday uh, f helping fix something around here, and they were talking about all the gear and, and how often they have to wash it every day and, you know, just, just, just the added stress for the job, but... Um, yeah, for sure. As you know, Chuck works in the fire service too. And mm -hmm. um, when all of this, when the coronavirus, all this stuff started, just in protocol after protocol after protocol, so much changed for them. Yeah, yeah. I think it's changed for all of us. Yeah. When did your <laughs> When did your dad retire? Yeah. Um, oof. maybe about ten years ago. Okay. Oh, so he's he's yeah. been living the the life for a decade now. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He stays. He stays very busy, though. So awesome. It's so good to, good to have them nearby. What was it like growing up in Gilbert, Arizona? Um, it was interesting. Now it's kind of like a hot little suburb of Phoenix. I don't live there anymore, but uh, it's a really popular place with all these cool restaurants. And um, when I grew up there, it was like this little farming town, and we had like a cornfield at the end of the street and horses. Um, and it was like a tiny little town. We had one high school. Now I think there's like four or five high schools at least. Um, they have all these hot new restaurants. I mean, literally, no, no offense to Applebee's, but all we had was Applebee's. And I'm so mad that now, like, they have all these restaurants and it's always rated as like one of the best, you know, towns in America. Um, but um, it was it was a good place to grow up. It was kind of a small, smaller town, but part of a bigger city, Phoenix. For sure. And then you ended up going to school in Tucson uh, College. Mm -hmm. Did you know? Yeah journalism was what you wanted? I know you said you sent out tapes like your senior year, yeah. but how did you get to that path? Well, I, I, my favorite thing that I did in high school was the newspaper. So I did really love writing and I always loved writing and English and literature. And so I, I thought I might be a journalism major, but I kind of dabbled in sociology for a while. 
and then just ended up back in journalism. And I was kind of deciding like, eh, do I want to do like newspaper or magazine writing or what? And I just did internships at all of them my senior year. And so I just kind of played around in all of those. And then I was in a newsroom uh, in Tucson and I just got sucked in. I mean, just the adrenaline of like the quick turnaround and, um, you know, writing things kind of snappy and uh, storytelling where you match the stories to video. I, I loved it. So yeah. I think by the time I graduated, I knew that's what I wanted to do. Internships, I feel like, are the best way to really figure out mm -hmm. It either sells yeah. you on journalism and then looking in the newsroom, you're kind of like, oh, that's the job I want. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I remember I went in going thinking I was going to be a producer and then I sat with a producer. Yeah. It was in Las Vegas at the time. And I'm like, nope. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I did that too. I'm like, I want to be a producer. And then I don't know, I got sucked into the, <laughs> the, the world that we're in. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The, the reporting yeah. side of it was pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. um, so mm -hmm. a lot of people, again, talking you know, and now it's different, but when you do finally decide, yes, this is what I want to do, and you have to send out, I, I sent out VHS tapes to like 50 places yes, across same. the country, uh -huh. right? Um, <laughs> and you literally either get, uh, you know, one or two phone calls or, or nothing. Uh -huh. Yeah, it was, it was, the calls were few and far between, uh, and it took months. I mean, I started at KTVL in December, um, and, you know, after graduating in May, so it took a long time. I got three calls. First was from Medford, uh, from Casey Bell, and I uh, interviewed and did not get the job. Did a phone interview, did not get the job. <laughs> then I got a call from somewhere in West Virginia, and I thought, that's just a little far to go. I don't think I want to do it. Another one from Northern Michigan, like, again, I don't think I'm Upper Peninsula. <laughs> I'm from Arizona. <laughs> I can't handle that. Uh, and then I was like, okay, but it's risky to turn this down. And then uh, Katie Bell called back. Uh, this is months later, and the person that they'd hired for the morning position um, wasn't working out. And so they're like, actually, if you're still interested, they flew me up for an in-person interview, uh, and then I ended up getting getting the job and being up there. Okay, so that was I'm assuming Gordon, yeah. right? Um, no, it wasn't Gordon. It was uh, Gary Leeming. Oh, me. that's right. Yeah, a lot of people don't realize yeah. this. Gary Leeming, who now works for Oregon Department of Transportation, was a was a yeah. KTVL news director. <laughs> and an anchor when we started, too. He was the news director and the anchor. <laughs> no way. I didn't realize he anchored, too. No. He did. I think it was kind of a fill-in anchor, but it was so... I mean, it, that's what's so cool about, you know, that news release that I was there. You got to do everything. I mean, yeah, everything. Oh, it's still the same. You still, yeah. I don't know if I would say you <laughs> get awesome. you get to do everything. You have to do everything. <laughs> it's all in how you look at it. It's all in how you look at it. Um, but I mean, I look at, at people who never went to a, a smaller market or got to do everything or had to do everything. Mm -hmm. And I just feel so lucky for all of those experiences. And I know Mark does too, because, you know, just his, his skill set, my husband who used to work there, he, his skill set is just so much better because of everything that, that he learned there. For sure, for sure. So mm -hmm. you get the job at KTVL and you're morning anchor, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was for the morning anchor job, which was coming in at midnight <laughs> to produce the show, <laughs> rolling all the feeds on the big giant tape oh. um, and, you know, like hold the tape, take them to the control room, cue them up, <laughs> write the whole show, run out, anchor the whole show. Yeah, that was, yeah, it was fun. Yeah, I didn't realize you produced <laughs> that too. That Again, yeah, I mean... We have yeah. producers now for all of our newscasts, yeah. but that just, that was not the case, yeah. you know, almost 20 years ago. Yeah. And, and I remember just at that time, I mean, like email was barely a thing. And so the first thing I did every day when I came in was check the fax machine. Like, did we get anything from Jackson County? Did we get anything from the Jersey County Sheriff's? I mean, I was checking the fax every day because it just, it baffles me how much things have changed. Yeah. Also, um, I remember on the weekends, it was well, in the mornings too, beat checks. Like we lived and died by yes. beat checks. Yes. Yes. Calling literally <laughs> everyone all over uh -huh. Southern Oregon. Um, uh -huh. So you get to KTVL and again, you have to learn obviously all of these steps to produce yeah. this hour long newscast, right? Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, what were some of the major faux pas <laughs> that first oh, few months? <laughs> um. Oh, I, I mean, so many of them. I mean, er, everything that you mispronounce when you don't come from that region, like, yeah. you know, the phone's ringing off the hook, like, it's Willamette. It's just, you know, like, every single word that you've never learned that you're just taking notes and writing down yeah. because you don't, you've never heard these things before. Um, uh, these are the terms before. And I mean, just probably the way that you pronounce things. Um, 
you know, also just a lot of like technical things mm -hmm. where, you know, like an open when it roll or the tape was queued up wrong. And I think learning how to adapt on the air when things go wrong is a big part of it because now it's like, you know, that stuff still happens all the time, whether you're on a live shot or whether it's a live newscast and things just go haywire technically and you kind of know how to adapt. And I feel like a lot of that was just from kind of learning to tap dance with your co-anchor or, you know, roll with the punches when things happen. For sure. For sure. Um, when did you meet Mark, your husband? Uh, probably the day I started. <laughs> was he already uh, there? Yeah. Yeah. He started in September, I think. And I started in December. Okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> were you like, yeah. oh, he's a dreamboat. <laughs> no, no. I was like, I'm staying away from that one. I just graduated college. I don't want any frat boys. <laughs> Bio on KCBL.com. So like he was the intramural chair for his fraternity. I'm like, no, frat boys. No, nope, no. Nope, <laughs> I'm here to work. I'm going to have a career. I'm not letting it get in the way. And I think I made it until February when we started dating. So like three months. <laughs> nice. You held out for as long yeah. as you could. And then it was like, I, I, yeah, yeah. So Mark was there doing sports. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right? he was uh, weekend sports. And then he was um, uh, moved up to the sports director and he was doing Monday through Friday sports. Okay. Um, do you look back at that now? And I mean, it is, it is crazy that you met your husband mm -hmm. at really your first TV yeah. job. Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah, it was, I mean, it is crazy. Um, but I, I think back on that time and it just feels magical to me. I mean, we, it was just like this world where you were just out of college, you moved to some place where you don't know anybody, like not a single person, but yet everybody in that newsroom was kind of our same age. And so it was really fun because everybody came from all different towns across the country and we all didn't know anybody either. And so we all would go out together. And I mean, uh, it, we would, you know, everybody would get off work at the 10 or 11 o'clock news and we'd go to Martino's or wherever. And it was just so fun because I felt like it was such a fun group um, and just a really neat time in life. And so I, I just, I just look back on those days so fondly. Same here. I agree. I agree so much. I've always said KTVL, especially right out of college, it's, it's kind of like graduate mm -hmm. school, right? Because you're learning mm -hmm. so much. Yeah. But yeah usually you're with people again like you said your same age and this is your yeah. family like this ktvl yeah they people, really are we did thanksgivings yeah. together i mean i was just gonna say we we did make a turkey together i think the first turkey i ever cooked was with you yeah <laughs> and we, the last two. <laughs> it was I, I think i remember this particular turkey you and i cooked had two necks in it i think you're right yeah we were like where did this come from <laughs> so gross like absolutely disgusting <laughs> Part of that graduate school, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> for sure, for sure. Um, what? I forgot about that. What are some of your favorite memories from KTVL? Because you were here. How long were you actually here before you moved on to Spokane? Um, I was there for five years. Five years, yeah. Four and a half, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, just I, I think those nights going out with our with our newsroom crew, but we also, you know, we did day trips, the rafting the Rogue River. Um, you know, doing that morning show and having the afternoons off, going and hiking the backside of, Ash of Mount mm -hmm. Ashland. Um, the Brit Festival was always my favorite, too. Um, taking road trips up to Portland uh, or Eugene, just yeah. exploring a whole new part of the country. Yeah, it's it's pretty crazy. Um, and again, you mm -hmm. know, there's so many people, especially in the time that I've been here, they're here for like maybe two years max. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it's crazy. And I and you know, there's there's quite a few people here in Phoenix too that started in Medford. Mm -hmm. And it's really interesting to hear different people's experiences because some people didn't like it. Some people have very like negative had a had mm -hmm. negative experience or didn't like it and I I mean, I kind of think it's what you make it. I I feel like we really made the most out of that time and just mm -hmm. explored everything and you know, had a great group of friends and I loved it. I mean, I I left to follow Mark because he got a job in Spokane and he wanted to, he wanted to move on mostly because of, of work. Like he just wanted to cover big teams and, yeah. you know, in the sports world. Um, but if I had not met him, I think I just would have stayed because I really loved it. And it was like, even then it was like four and a half years in and, you know, we weren't engaged. So I was like, should I really be following him? I really <laughs> like him here. <laughs> it worked out, but I mean, I, I really did like it there. I mean, I don't know how many like one or two year contracts I ended up signing just to kind of keep extending my mm -hmm. time there because I just, I didn't want to leave. I loved it. Yeah, no, I hear you. <laughs> I, <Yeah. agree. laughs> I know you do. I know you understand. Um, 
You actually, you worked in Spokane too, right? You got a job up there? Uh -huh. Yeah. Where was that? No, I did, well, I went up and I, I was a freelance reporter for a while. That's so right. yeah, I did a couple months there because by the time I got up there, Mark had already been there two years into a three-year contract and he kind of knew he didn't want to stay. Mm -hmm. So it was like, I don't think I'm going to sign a contract there and stay. We knew Spokane wasn't really the, the place we wanted to stay. And so um, I just got a freelance job. So yeah. yeah. A re reporting at a news station. Sure. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I absolutely remember that. Was Phoenix always the ultimate goal for you to get back home? No, I really didn't want to come back here. Really? Um, I, yeah, I, I mean, I like, I, I liked it here growing up here, but you know, there's that just feeling of like getting away from home mm -hmm. and I just didn't really want to come back. I like just having that independence in a different life. And, um, I, I, I didn't really want to come back here. I think Mark and I were thinking we might go to Austin. He went to college there and I had been there several times and I thought that was such a fun place. And we were trying to get there and just the jobs never really opened up. And then this job came open in Phoenix and Mark was the one who kind of pushed me into that. He's like, you should go for that. I was like, I don't know if I want to come back here. Um, but I ended up getting the job and taking the job and just deciding to live in a different part of town and kind of make it a different experience. What was the job? What was the offer? Um, so it was for a weekend uh, meteorologist, weather person. Okay. Yeah. Um, so. And you were actually, when you left KTVL, you were doing uh -huh. weather here. I was, well, not really. I mean, I think I did it when someone didn't show up for their job. <laughs> but I was so, like, I, when someone slept in, not going to name any names. <laughs> but <laughs> I wasn't technically ever on the schedule to do weather. <laughs> oh, that's always how it goes, right? Yeah. Hey, uh -huh. can you, do you think you could do weather this morning? Right, right. And then they're like, because you have to. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah, no, so when I came to Phoenix and this job was open, um, I mean, I had told them, like, I'm, I'm not a meteorologist. I've really never done weather before. Uh, but they liked that I was from Arizona. I mean, I grew up here, and I'm from a very outdoorsy family, so we camping, fishing, hiking. I mean, I know the terrain. I know the whole state pretty well. Yeah. And they said, well, we like that you're from here, and you know the state very well, and will pay for you to go back to school to become a meteorologist. So the company paid for me to go back to school and become a meteorologist. So I did that within my first couple of years here. Okay. And how long, how long did that take you, that school part? About three years. Three years. Okay. Did you enjoy it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 It was cool. Yeah. It was, it, it was neat because it's a whole different thing. I mean, when you're a journalism major, you don't, you don't take more than the basic science classes, you know, like I did take meteorology 101 before, but then going back and taking all the harder level classes, it was tough. I mean, I think we're journalism majors for, you know, for a <laughs> reason. we're good at <laughs> for a reason. Yeah. So so taking some higher level math and science, it was a real challenge. Um, but, but it was cool. I don't think I could do it now with kids, but at the time, I mean, Mark and I were newlyweds and I had all the time in the world. So taking classes was, was good. For sure. Mm -hmm. So you start doing weekend, uh, you know, you're the weekend meteorologist mm -hmm. there. Um, yeah. When did the morning position pop up for you? Um, it was about two, two and a half years in. Mm -hmm. And um, we had a uh, morning show uh, weather guy who uh, was really funny, really hilarious. Like I grew up watching him and he was still there. So he didn't leave, but they decided they wanted to add another person to the show to the weekday show who could focus more on weather because he had a background in comedy and so he did all these really fun live shots and then they wanted someone to kind of stay in the studio uh and uh, and be the meteorologist and then after and then shortly after that he actually did end up leaving um and so now i'm it that, yeah <laughs> and i actually remember that day and i was like holy yeah. crap she she's like you're you're like doing it you know this is what we all <laughs> yeah. all of us seriously we all sort of dream about mm -hmm. that that position that you're just like, this is it. Yeah. I kind of, I feel really good. And it's, it's like a level of success for us, you know? Yeah, no, it feels good now. It was terrifying at the time, but now, <laughs> <laughs> now I can look back and be like, yeah, that was cool. <laughs> Why was it terrifying? Um, because of, well, I mean, for many reasons, but maybe the biggest, there's so many more people watching here. It's such a big city. Um, my whole family is here. I mean, when I first started here and I didn't have a lot of weather experience, my mom would call or relatives would call and like, yeah, you need to practice a little more or what are you wearing today? And I didn't get that when I was in Oregon. Like nobody could see me. We weren't <laughs> streaming on the web at the time or, yeah. you know, I didn't have any family there. So, uh, it was just hard. It was a bigger audience and, um, a lot of pressure. I mean, the, the, our show has been the number one rated morning show in Phoenix for as long as I've, I, you know, grew up watching it. And so, 
also just to have that history. And it was very just intimidating to go be part of that show. And there are a lot of big personalities there. And I don't feel like I'm a big personality, um, you know, so it's like, <laughs> so it, was, it was an adjustment, but I, yeah, but yeah. I love it. Yeah. Well, um, I, you know, I, I, I see where you're coming from because I think also you have a lot of type A's in this, in this industry mm -hmm. and we're, yeah. we're, we're, we're perfect, or at least we think we are. Right. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> you you don't you don't mess up and if yeah. you do you're just like yeah. you're digging yourself a hole because you're just like I can't ah. believe I said that yeah and you just feel like too there's you know a, I, I say a stack of 500 tapes of people waiting to take a job I don't think they make tapes anymore but you know what I mean like there's yeah. a line of people who could take your job if you mess up or they think you're not good enough so I just felt a lot of pressure there yeah I literally, this thought occurred to me the other day. I remember signing my contract in wherever mm -hmm. I was for Medford. And I remember crying to my mom going, I gotta, I gotta get going before 35 because when I hit 35, I'm gonna be done. I'm gonna be like old and all of these things. And that's just, you know, it wasn't the case then. It's not the case yeah. now really. Yeah, yeah, no, it's true. I mean, I thought, yeah, same thing. And now I'm in my forties and just, you know, and kicking it. Yeah. <laughs> well, I do think, I mean, wouldn't you agree? Audiences tend to, um, really just, they get used to someone and then they don't mm -hmm. ever want them to leave. And it's just, it, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter how, how much older you get. Yeah. I, I hope that's the case. I mean, I, I feel like I always grew up watching a certain station because of the people and because mm -hmm. who I like to watch. And I think after a while you feel like you know that person. And that's one of the things I think I love the most about having been here now for 15 years is that people do come up to me in the grocery store and they don't even come up to me. They come up to my kids and they're like, oh, hey, you're green. I remember when you were in your mom's tummy. And I mean, they do feel like they know you and it's, it's a cool thing. Yeah. So Greer, when was Greer born? Uh, 2010. Yeah. He just turned 10. And you named yeah. him after uh, Greer, Arizona. Greer, Arizona. Yeah. yeah. It's a little mountain town in Eastern Arizona where I grew up camping and we used to go there every summer um, and it's just a place I really like. So yeah. funny story that we'd actually debated because he's our firstborn of two boys. Um, we had debated like, you know, what would be a cool name and on our, on our short list of names because we had met in Southern Oregon one of the names we had considered was Rogue because we were like, wouldn't that be a cool name? Like after the Rogue River. And then we were like, that kid's going to have to be a serious badass. Like, he's got to live up to that name. I don't know if our kid's going to be that much of that. Like, maybe we should be giving him the name Rogue. <laughs> we always tell him, like, that was almost your name. No, Greer's perfect. It's perfect. And you, yeah. I, I, even I think on your social media, there's such cute pictures of you and Greer in front of the sign, Aww. Greer. So. Yeah. And, oh, and now thanks. you're doing yeah. TikTok videos with him. So. Mm, yeah, that's a quarantine that's made us all kind of lose our minds. <laughs> uh <laughs> When did you guys, we kind of went into lockdown here in March. What, uh -huh. what was it like for yeah, you guys? Same. Okay. Yeah, it was the same. It was uh, spring break here and uh, they closed down the schools, you know, during spring break and the kids didn't go back and the, the station, uh, you know, they were the same. They kept us all home, just left on a Friday and didn't come back on a Monday. And how long has that been now? Uh, I mean, you haven't like gone back, right? I don't I mean Oh, no, I haven't gone back. No, I was actually supposed to go back this past week and then they pushed it back another two weeks and our numbers are climbing really high here in Arizona. So I'm supposed to go back in two weeks, but we'll see what they decide there. They really want to make sure the newsroom is very clean and cleaning products are hard to come by and we have a pretty big staff. And so they're going to bring us back in small groups. Um, and our weather team is supposed to be among the first because we have monsoon season starting here and it's about to be our really active weather season. And it would be helpful to be near all of our equipment there, not my living room, um, but we will see. <laughs> we'll see when that happens. What size market is Phoenix? Um, I don't know. I want to say maybe 11 or 12. Okay, I'm going to look it up. Um, yeah. <laughs> how many people, how many people, let's just say your morning show, just your morning show, is the entire on-air oh, staff all working from home? Oh. Um, no, we have two or three anchors in the okay. studio. So we, we have, we, we have um, our station's a duopoly, and so our station's an independent, yeah. and then we have the CBS affiliate is also in the building. And when uh, we started this quarantine, they decided to simulcast. So we have two morning shows mm. that have joined forces, and they just air, we just do one morning show right now and air it on both stations. 
And so it allows for, you know, staffing and everybody who's kind of doing these crazy schedules and work from home. And so I think they're going to continue that through the summer months. So we have quite a few anchors and reporters uh, and most of them are, are from are from home. Yeah. From the two separate stations. Yeah. You know? So, well, I, I do hope you get back to the station soon. I know I've been here and we've had producers uh-huh. and reporters working from home. And yeah, as you know, newsrooms can be either highly obnoxious or incredibly fun. Yeah. Or a little bit of both. And so I just, I miss, a little both, yeah. yeah, I miss, I just miss seeing my, yeah. my coworkers. Yeah. Yeah. I do too. I know what you mean for sure. Um, yeah. Monsoon season. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Explain that to me. So it's kind of our summer thunderstorm season here. And so Arizona, they always joke about it and say, but it's a dry heat because I mean, our two points are in like the single digits right now. It's so dry and it's our fire season too. Um, and it's very hot and very dry in June. And I mean, we've hit 112 so far this summer. I've got 111 in the forecast next week. Um, it's just miserable. And our records that go up to like 120, 122, 121, uh. 162, those are all in June because it's just so hot and dry. And then in July and August, uh, we get, a, it's kind of like a seasonal wind shift. And so you get in this moisture from the south and the southeast and it's an extra fuel thunderstorms across the state. So then it becomes hot and humid. <laughs> fun and really miserable <laughs> and it's only like 105 but you get thunderstorms and we get you know big dust storms too uh and uh, it gets pretty crazy around here so that is is technically from june 15th to september 30th uh, but it's most active in july and august right and so those dust storms because i looked this up uh-huh. they're called haboobs right yeah haboobs yeah the, the really big ones like they call a, a haboob yeah do you guys get a yeah. lot of those yeah, well, depending on the year. I mean, last year we had a handful. Um, the year before, I mean, we I don't even know how many we had. Somewhere between probably like 10 and 20 of them. And yeah, they're, they're pretty, they're worse when it's really dry, when we have a really dry year and the land, mainly south of Phoenix, um, gets really parched and dusty. And then you get like a thunderstorm outflow that just goes and picks it up and it just rolls and rolls and rolls right towards Phoenix and rolls into town. So on um, years when it's a little bit drier or a little bit active, more active in that part of the state and there's not a lot of rain, you get them kind of early in the season before the real rain comes. It's just, it's pretty much. <laughs> yeah. What are the dangers with, yeah. with big haboobs? I mean, can you, is visibility bad? Yeah, visibility is bad. I mean, we encourage people to pull off to the side of the road to not try to drive in it. But, you know, there's always stubborn people just like there's stubborn people who drive through washes and do what they're not supposed to do. So there's always, you know, some, some crashes or some pileups sometimes on the I-10 south of um, south of Phoenix. Um, and then, you know, air quality can stay pretty low. So for people with asthma, we see a big spike in hospitalizations after big death storms. A lot of people with asthma suffer. Um, yeah, okay. it's kind of gross. It kind of hangs out in the air for a little while. Yeah, well, as you know, with wildfire mm-hmm. season here, we get, we get yeah. I want to say it was oh, yeah. not last summer. Um, Milt Radford, our meteorologist, is in the studio with me. Uh-huh. But he's working while <laughs> I'm just conversing with you. Um, but mm-hmm. I believe it was not last summer, but the summer before that, where we had uh-huh. the really bad smoke. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> that was, um, it was like tw- how many days? It was over 40. It was like 43 days in a row. Where yeah. We were um, oh, yeah. in the uh, category of, you know, severe. And I want to say there were several days in that stretch where Cl- where Lakeview, I think it was Lakeview. Lakeview. They topped 400, wow. which is in the hazardous category. 400. We yeah. had a three-day stretch where we were the worst in the world. We were worse than Beijing. Medford was worse than Beijing for three days in a row wow. during that summer. <laughs> That's terrible. I mean, I kind of remember how the smoke just kind of sits in the valley there, yeah. and you really smell it. I, I swear I remember times Thank when I would know. walk outside from my uh, apartment in Ashland and you could smell the smoke and we would know before we'd even get like a press release on there being a new fire. Like you could just smell it. It was such a familiar smell. Absolutely. And then you go and your all of your camera gear smells like wildfire for about a week. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. Um, no. Yeah. Cause you, uh-huh. yeah, you obviously remember too, the Valley is, mm-hmm. it's like a bowl. So when we get that fog, yeah. it just sits and then the fog smoke. And the smoke. Yeah. yeah. Milt's mm-hmm. talked about this before. I think it was that same year we had, maybe eight, 15 wildfires burning all around us, but nothing was in Medford, right? They were, it was like a circle. Yeah, right, it was like points of the wow. compass. So if, 
if yeah. one direction isn't going to get you today, the other, other one yeah, Right. Yeah. So we couldn't escape it. Yeah. Do you guys have a, 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 a serious wildfire season? In Phoenix? Yeah, we do. Well, well, today we have the biggest wildfire in the in the country right now. Um, the bushfire just hit 86,000 acres this morning. So mm -hmm. it's the seventh, seventh biggest wildfire in Arizona history right now. We had a really wet winter here and then followed by a really dry spring. So now everything's just ripe to burn. And so we had an early start to fire season. These fires are growing bigger and faster right now. And that one, yeah, this morning um, from our newscast, it, it was um, 80, yeah, 86,000 acres was our was our last update. Yeah, so well, they're evacuating some of the towns up there. Yeah, yeah, that sounds about right in 2020. What What, what do you need now? It's <laughs> right? what a <else>? massive wildfire. <laughs> Pretty much even the murder hornets left. They're like, yeah. we're done. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's seriously like, you know, we're joking yeah. about it. But man, it has just been an absolute insane One year thing after another. Yeah, in this industry. No, it's true. Uh, it's true. What's Marky Mark been up to these days? <laughs> well, he is still covering sports. Um, there are not a lot of sports to cover. Uh, he's, he's stayed very busy uh, just talking about, you know, what's going on in the baseball world and, you know, will baseball come back? Will basketball come back? But, you know, the Cardinals are still holding press conferences, uh, you know, to talk about all sorts of different things. And so he turns a story every day from our laundry room, uh, but he's not at <laughs> with Skype interviews and FaceTime interviews, but uh, he certainly misses covering games for sure. He's, He's really loved living in Phoenix, which is probably why we've stayed for 15 years. I mean, I love it too, uh, but he's not from here. And I've been just surprised how much he loves it here uh, because there's so many major sports teams and um, he's just really been able to thrive, I think, with his career. That's amazing. Um, what What's next for you, April Warnicky? Is it is it good morning, <laughs> good morning, Arizona all the way? I don't know. I mean, I don't see any reason to leave. We love it here. So I... Yeah, I can't. I can't imagine a situation where we'd leave. I mean, I never say never. Yeah, it's harder now with kids with kids in school. I mean, I would hate to pull them out of here. Yeah, but um, I I don't know. That would be tough. Uh, getting back yeah. to the weather side of your job, what technology mm -hmm. do you guys use at the station for your for your weathercast? Oh, we have the same WSI computers probably that that you guys have. I mean, same probably everywhere. Yeah, we're barren. Oh, Baron. Okay, so there's. I think there's two, maybe three companies. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> the other one. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We're we're Baron. Um, yeah. And as far as when you come in in the mornings, I mean, uh -huh. there's there's a method, right? When when you come in to, well, you mm -hmm. don't go when when you when you stumble yeah. out <laughs> of your bedroom. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So what are you looking for to create this weathercast? Um, well, typically, I mean, I would go into the station and, and work on all of the graphics. I mean, I put together a forecast. We have, you know, our show is four and a half hours long in the morning, and we have a producer for each different hour of that show. Um, but I don't have a weather producer, so I'm putting together all my own graphics and all my own forecast. So it took a while to do that. I update our website with a, a, an article. I put out the um, push alert on phones mm -hmm. that will go out to, to all of our viewers. Um, I put in closed captioning uh, into the computer, update that, talk to all of the producers, and kind of just uh, go over what the plan is for each hour. Because like I said, each hour has a different producer, so I kind of need to talk to each one of them. And like today, it was a lot of team coverage for, for the wildfire, and so different hours would be like, I'm talking to Gibby, who's out on the fire, or another you know, segment, yeah. we're going to focus on air quality. And so it's yeah. a lot of touching base with them. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. And how has social mm -hmm. media, because I, I kind of know the answer to this question, but not necessarily mm -hmm. for a big market like yours um, that you're in, how has social media played a role in, in your day-to-day -day <laughs> job? Yeah. Well, in some ways, it's been incredibly helpful. I mean, the getting weather reports and weather pictures from all across the state is great. I mean, I can look at a radar uh, and say, like, I'm pretty sure it's hailing right there. But when you are all of a sudden getting a flood of pictures in, uh, you know, on your Facebook page, or if you can look on Twitter and see that it's incredibly helpful. It's been good for tracking dust too. I mean, dust storms have to be pretty big before the radar can pick up on those. Uh, and so when they're just starting out, we have a lot of people, you know, storm chasers will go out and be tweeting their pictures and they'll mm -hmm. send it to us or, or sending us their videos or live streaming. And so we can kind of get an eye on it right when that dust storm is starting and starting to build and we can give people a better heads up. So it's really helpful in many ways. And this morning I can say, you know, hey, what's going on in Payson? Is anybody seeing the wildfire smoke there? And I can get reports from people in Payson. How bad is it? On the other hand, <laughs> 
someone doesn't like this shirt, they're going to tell me about it <laughs> and they're not going to be nice about it. So um, I am really grateful that we did not have social media when I was in Medford, because I think starting out, <laughs> I would not have had the thick skin that I have now. Um, and you maybe would have found me crying in the corner in the newsroom from yeah. people being mean to me. And now I'm like, delete. <laughs> oh, big time. Yeah. No, before yeah. the days of social media, your our viewers just like to tell us in person in, in the grocery store what they liked oh, and didn't right? like about us. That's true. Or once in a while, call up uh, to the newsroom phone and tell you. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, um, I, I know you have stories of like some really probably great viewer calls and nasty viewer calls, but I've had, I've had women literally calling me saying that I needed to uh, cut my hair because the swirls right. in my hair were too distracting. Oh, of course, right. And then what I did eventually cut it because I donated it, mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. I think the same woman called and she called me Chris and then she said, I'm really glad Chris cut her hair off because I, it was so distracting. Oh my gosh, it's just like a double punch, like a put down and I don't even have your name right. Yeah, and then when I told her it was me, I said, yeah, you're actually talking to, uh, it's Trish, by the way. Um, she, started, right, right. she started fake crying on the phone. Oh gosh, like yeah. I'm so sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I find that usually if I, if I ever do email back, then people are like, oh, I'm so sorry. I, I didn't mean this or whatever. They usually, you know, are really nice about it. But it is interesting that you say that because I think 90% of the time it's women who send those emails and women who make the comments and, you know, are very critical. Yeah. Milt and I have had these conversations mm -hmm. multiple times. Mm -hmm. uh, women, yeah. I hate to say it, are just kind of nasty when it comes to yeah. being judgy. I've, yep. I've if I get, if I get... What did you say? Go ahead. I'm just going to butt in and say I've taken in 40 years in broadcasting, 40, I have had maybe two phone calls and two yeah. emails from men, yeah. hundreds from women mm -hmm. complaining about women. Yeah. Wow. I mean, yeah. it's just, no, that's it's just a fact, you know. I yeah. mean, it's, it's bizarre to me. Yeah. So, I mean, well, it, where's, yeah, the, where's the feminist bizarre. sisterhood out there? <laughs> it's, it's true, though. Like, I would never, you know, yeah. I would never, especially if I see a, a girl at a competing station and there's just uh -huh. something horrendously wrong, I'll just email her and I'll be like, look, I have a little bit of advice for you. But yeah. it's just to make her better. But just the emails that are just downright nasty or the comments or whatever, yeah. it's like, come on, we're well, supposed to be nice. And I think social media gives people the chance to do that while really kind of staying anonymous. And it makes it easier. They don't have to talk to you on the phone or they don't have to look you in the eye and tell you that. And they never would if they had to. No, no. But I yeah. feel like I feel like you you've probably you and probably your crew in the morning have heard it all from viewers. <laughs> yeah, I have. I actually I gave a talk at my uh, at the mom's group at my church a couple of weeks ago, and it was about like having confidence in who you are and who God made you and not what other people say you are. And I specifically pulled all of the emails that I had saved. And I've only saved the particularly bad ones. <laughs> I read them and they were like, oh, mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, so, yeah, they, they're just mean. Um, super mean. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, I, the same thing. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll tell people, I'll pull up an email and read it out loud in front of friends. Yeah. And they're just like, there's no yeah. way someone sent that to you. No. It's pretty awful, and you, you just have to not let that get to you. Yeah. Um, it's hard, though. Um, it, I mean, even even after all these years of getting those, you still you still sometimes question, like, well, maybe I don't want to wear that dress again, or should I cut my hair, or should I? And then you're like, no, stop talking crazy. Like, yeah, <laughs> it's true. I do think I, I will say this though. I think sometimes those emails, I take them with a grain of salt because there's sometimes mm -hmm. where they may have like a little speck of, of truth in there where you kind of go, yeah, okay, yeah. she's right. That blazer is a little too tight for me. Get it. It's gone. Yeah. 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 That's what I'm saying. Like sometimes I'll think about it and then sometimes, yeah. Yeah. Not worth thinking about it. Yeah. Right. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> um, and it is yeah. interesting. I, I don't want to like stay on this, but it's, it is interesting too that mm -hmm. you, for all of us, I argue with myself mm -hmm. sometimes because I'm like, well, I'm putting myself out there. I'm in the, yeah. the public yeah. eye. And then the smart part of my true, brain says, no yeah. one is allowed to talk to you that way. Yeah. No, and being married to someone who's also been in the news business for 20 years. I mean, it's the same thing. If he ever gets an email, a complaint, it's about, you know, why didn't you mention my high school mm -hmm. score? Or why didn't you cover this? It's never about what he's wearing. And I am rarely getting comments about, you know, a forecast that they thought I got wrong or, you know, complaint about that. It is always about my appearance. So it is a little bit hard. 
I mean, I do feel like he could wear the same tie for three months straight and no one would notice. Right. Or but complain. If, if you wore the same dress for a week uh-huh. straight, you'd hear about it. Oh, for sure. Even if I've worn it like once every three weeks or something. Like if I've had times where maybe I was coming back from maternity leave and I didn't have as many dresses that fit. So like instead of wearing something once a month, I wore it like once every three weeks or something. Mm-hmm. And then people would say stuff. And it's like, people, come on. It's amazing. <sighs> right. Uh, you ha- but you're right. You have to have tough skin and you have to just be able to go, yeah. okay, thanks, bye. Yeah, it's why I'm glad that like it wasn't around back when I was starting because I think the whole journey has just been about building confidence and becoming comfortable with who you are. Not to say you couldn't do that with social media, but it's, it's got to be so much harder, I imagine. Oh, for sure. Yeah. And I just feel like I, see, I look at our reporters, there's so much more on them these days than I ever had to do. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Gosh, yeah, yeah. Um, I was looking through pictures the other day, and I think it's the picture. I want to say it's you, me, and Erica Harquist. Uh huh. Uh, holding up that very short professional bowler. Okay. Do you? Um, his name yes, was Duke. Yeah, I have so many pictures from Lava Lanes. Yeah, I think it was from Lava Lanes and the Hedford Open, and uh, yeah, and we had like matching. Um, I don't know what you call them, not jerseys. Yeah, uh, they're like the polo. They're like um, bowling shirts. Yeah. yeah, bowling shirts. Yeah, and then we did like a 50s theme one year or something. I mean, it was so much fun. Yeah, it's, yeah. That, that was a lot of fun. Really good memories. In fact, when yeah. you were talking about wildfire season and our gear smelling like uh-huh. smoke, I remember Matt Spaulding went uh-huh. out to cover a wildfire and got hosed by the retardant from the plane. <laughs> yeah. I remember that. Yeah. Oh, that, I mean, we could laugh about it now, but yeah, we saw Matt. Um, we, he lives in Texas uh, uh-huh. now. And so one of the times we've gone to Texas to visit Mark's family, we met up with Matt and his wife and their kids. And it was funny to kind of talk about some of those old Medford stories. Yeah. He, uh, <laughs> he got in trouble by Gordon, our news director at the uh-huh. time. And he looked like he had the measles yep. because he literally was just peppered with peppered. this yeah. retarded. Speaking of Gordon Godfrey, yeah. um, yes. have you heard his news? No. Okay, I'll tell you later because I don't want to announce it on the podcast, but he's on the move. That's all I'm going to say. Again, he's always on the move. Yeah, he's he's, he's got a, like nine lives, like different adventures that he goes on. Yeah, he's awesome. The thing I loved working for him too. So it's just, yeah. Amazing. Well, he and Suzanne both, absolutely yeah. amazing people. Yeah. I mean, and a good boss can make all the difference. And I think that's probably, you know, a big part of why I was so happy there um, at KTVL. Yeah. He, he was part of that. Oh, for sure. Yeah, he was absolutely the reason yeah. I stayed for, yeah. well, <laughs> I'm still here. But, um, no, <laughs> great boss. And is he goes, coming back there? Is, is that his news? He's coming back there? I'll tell you, I'll tell you in, like, a text or something. I don't, okay. okay. If, if I say the wrong thing, he'll, he'll kill mm-hmm. me. We actually, when okay. Chuck and I went on our honeymoon in Mexico, and they were living in Mexico, yeah. we had dinner with him and Suzanne yeah. while we were there. I will. Hey, um, Mark says hi, but also, what is the name of the bowler that we were holding up in the picture at Lava Lane? Is it Duke something Duke? Norm Duke. Norm, Norm Duke. Norm Duke. Yes, you want to say hi? Here, here, he, he can say hi here. Yeah. Hey, Mark. Hey, guys. Norm Duke. How's it going, buddy? <laughs> uh, yeah, Norm Duke. Um, what well, was gutter to gutter coverage? Gutter to gutter coverage. Yes. <laughs> yeah. My first. Big time professional sporting event. No, I'm quit making the table. You're shaking the table. <laughs> oh, it's still on your that, resume, I think. That was a that bowling tournament was a big deal for us. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, there were special like commercials and promos made for that, mm-hmm. and Mark's got them all saved. He has saved. I mean, literally, we have bins of tapes from all of the games he covered, and I think it's because he's a little nostalgic too about like he loves Aww. everything that he got to do there, and he saved all of that. Aw. Hey, actually, North, North and South Medford, best sporting event maybe ever. And I think he probably still has that bowling shirt, by the way. I, I know I do. <laughs> That's so funny. That's I'm awesome. thankful that some of the first stuff I did at KTVL exist on mm-hmm. tapes that no one can yeah. access. No one can look at. Nope. Nope, because they're about this thick and... There, there, there is no equipment for those tapes anymore. Yeah. <laughs> um, That's okay. a good thing. You're right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, April Warnicky, we are going to wrap up a little bit. I am so glad you popped into my brain oh. and I said, we need to do a podcast. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, Me too. Best advice you've ever been given? Um, best advice, probably just to be yourself. I know that sounds just cliche, um, but I think we often just need to be reminded of that. Um, when I was talking about coming to Phoenix and just being super intimidated, and I had a, a special uncle, my godfather, who just said, you just need to not worry about all those big personalities and the people that you think are more talented or pretty or whatever. Like, you're here because you're supposed to be just be yourself and they'll love you. And I think just sometimes in life we just have to get back to that and, you know, in order to, to, to keep your confidence. Yeah, very, very good advice. Um, if you ever left this place, and you have, uh, what would bring you mm -hmm. by, What would bring you and Mark back here? What, what do you guys miss the most about Southern Oregon? I think just the quality of life. I mean, the weather, walking around to restaurants, the, the river right there, the ski slopes right there. I mean, just that you could do it all. And I mean, maybe it's changed, but you know, not a lot of traffic. Um, the quality of life was incredible. Mark, Mark says, make us an offer. <laughs> <laughs> Come on back yeah. anytime. I'll take you to yeah. some wineries. Um, we have to talk about, because you also had another, um, another friend with you here when you were in Southern Oregon, Merton. Oh, yes. Best he, dog ever. Best yes. dog ever. <laughs> oh. And yeah. he loved Southern Oregon. He did. He did. I mean, his favorite thing ever was just, you're going to make me cry now, was just swimming in the Rogue River. And I mean, that dog moved to Medford with me when I knew nobody else. It was just me and Merton. And, you know, we would just hike up that backside of Mount Ashland. We would go in the Rogue River. I mean, he just, he loved it there too. It was just a really special place to, to yes. share it with him. He was, he was yeah. the best, the best and sweetest yeah. dog. Um, I've not found another dog that good yet, so we haven't gotten one yet. Yeah, well, it'll be hard. You're, you're going to have to go. You're going to have to go for different, different dogs. Yeah, I guess so. The boys really want a dog, so that's probably next up. Um, good, do it. But maybe when our maybe when our house isn't also our studio and our office. <laughs> Oh, no, that's all you need on your plate, right? Um, yeah, right. Okay, final meal, final drink. What would that look like? Um, probably a glass of good red wine. Um, and there is a restaurant by our house that I really love that has a short rib gnocchi. That's my favorite. Um, mm. I would probably do that. That's perfect. That is perfect. Mm. Um, April Warnicky, thank you again so much. Uh, Thank you. If you are watching this podcast, you can do so at ktvl.com or you can find me on YouTube and you can listen to this podcast anywhere where you like to download podcasts. One more time, April Warnicky, uh, Emmy Award winning meteorologist <laughs> with Good Morning Arizona. <laughs> April, it's so good to see you again and catch up. Thank, Thank you. You too, Chris. Thank you.